marriage and mother will always be a burden to women even though they are meant to be sources of blessings to her the signs are everywhere evidences abound as to why marriage would always be a burden to women why do we have so many women who thrive better when they get divorced or separated from their husband when they were married they couldn't attain this height that they have now achieved within a short period of time you might stop to think if marriage is more of a burden if marriage clips the wings of a woman from flying and soaring high why do so many women still crave to go down the same paths why do so many women long and would give anything to be inside this prison called marriage this and many more might be random thoughts that might have crossed your mind at one point or the other as a woman i'm sure they must have crossed your mind i mean the signs about the evidence is about and there are so many testimonies that attest to the negative sides of marriage and that is why I want us to have this conversation. This conversation is long overdue and if we delay any further, so many women might continue to be deluded and deceived as to what is not. Hi everyone, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Diamond Mom. I film about motherhood, relationship and lifestyle. If you are new here, thank you for stopping by. Please don't make this your last. Subscribe to this YouTube channel as you'll find so much valuable content on here. And to my returning subscribers, thank you guys for always coming back. First things first, we need to establish the fact that marriage is a godly establishment. No matter how we might try to remove the God factor from marriage, we need to bear in mind that marriage was first instituted by God in the Garden of Eden. And in as much as we now see marriage to be a social thing, to be a social institution, a social affair, or a casual thing, or maybe a legal thing, we cannot excuse the fact that marriage is first of all a godly institution, and the essence of marriage lies in God. That is why if you take away the God factor from a marriage, it more or less becomes a burden. Or a tax that you have to bear for the rest of your life marriage on its own is a godly and a holy institution marriage on its own did not promise you so many things I get that the reason why we hinge so much expectations so much reward in marriage is because we don't even know what we are going into or what we are already into the reason why you might have been seeing marriage as a burden or something that you should manage something that okay it's not rosy everywhere is because you've gotten the foundation wrong whenever you take away the god factor away from your marriage then watch that marriage sink marriage is not a destination and i would always repeat this it is a service it is a task it is an assignment that you willingly and you consciously took upon yourself. So we as women need to stop thinking of marriage as being something that should reward us. And that is why you cannot take away sacrifice and selflessness from the place of marriage. I mean, let us even look at the personality of the institutor of marriage, our God. We know that our God is a selfless God, is a sacrificial God, is a God who loves us endlessly and unconditionally. Now, he expects, of course, he expects that when he showers us his love, when he is always there for us, that we should only, you know, acknowledge him, worship him, you know, reverence him. That is just what he wants from us. But even though we do not acknowledge him, even though we do not worship God, even though we do not reverence God, he still does not withhold his love from us. The sun that shines on us every day is a reflection of God's love for us. Now there has never been a time when the sun shines on some people and it doesn't shine on some people. So whether you reverence God or not, he still allows the sun to shine down on you. He still gives you free air you know, he still takes care of you. He never holds back his benefits and his privileges from you. So that is the same nature that we as women are to bring into marriage. It is when we start to think that our husband should reward us or our husband should behave in a certain kind of way that we start to feel the burden and the weight that is upon us. And that is why whenever you hear someone 
tell a married woman on how to treat her husband right, to respect her husband, to serve her husband, you know, to put her husband as a priority. There is always someone, no, there are always people, there are always voices coming out to say, what's about the man? It is the man that is worthy of this, that we are going to do that. We're not going to do this for any, you know, there are always voices to always tell you that it's not only in the place of the woman to do this and that the man also has to do this or the man has to be deserving. Remember that we need to emulate our father. We need to emulate the institutor of marriage because taking away from the question that then there is no marriage at all. As married Christian women, we need to know that whatever service you render to your husband in marriage, you are rendering it as unto the Lord. You are not rendering it to your husband for him to see it and to appreciate you or for him to see it and to compensate you if your husband appreciates you and compensates you then well you're lucky but if he doesn't compensate you if he doesn't acknowledge you then you shouldn't be bitter and you shouldn't stop doing it because we don't always compensate god we don't always acknowledge God. There are so many things that God does for us that we don't even take notice of. But he never stops doing these things. That is the way you should be. Because you know that to all these things, there is an end. Yes. Marriage is an assignment to you. Marriage is an earthly ministry. It is an earthly assignment that God has given to you. And mind you, you are going to give account of it. You should know that your actions, your sacrifices, and your activities in marriage should not be dependent on the action of your partner. No. And that is why the Bible tells us, even if you are married to an unbeliever, even if you are married to a man who is wicked, who has a bad heart, you can win him over by your good actions. The Bible did not say that you should win him over by withholding good from him or by always nagging or by complaining or by reporting him to the authorities. No. The Bible says that continue with your good work and sooner or later your good deeds, your good work will win him over. And this also applies between the believers and the unbelievers. You don't win over a soul for Christ. You don't convert a sinner by castigating the sinner or by condemning or judging the sinner. You win the sinner over by showing love, pure love. Remember that Christ loved us even in our sins. Even when we were yet to know about him, Christ's love was there for us. And that is the way we are meant and we are commanded to extend love to our husbands. When you see it this way, then whenever you hear the issue of submitting to your husband, you wouldn't be angry, you wouldn't be so bitter. Because you know that this is the will of God for you. And I mean, you submitting to your husband, you respecting your husband, you are not just doing it for doing sick, or you are not just doing it to a physical man. You are seeing the image of God in that man. You are seeing the image of Christ in that man. And you are reverencing that man. You are respecting that man. You are submitting to that man the same way you would submit to God. Because God has instructed you. If you say you are my child, if you say you are my own, then submit to this man that is your head. You wouldn't find a problem with it. But I guess the issue is that Nowadays, we no longer see marriage to be a godly institution. We see marriage to be a social something, to be an achievement, to be a competition, to be an empowerment, to be a means of escapism, escapism from poverty, escapism from shame, escapism from so many things. Like, think of anything. We see marriage to be all of these things apart from a godly institution. And that is why... There are so many failures that is why there are so many bitter there are so many unhappy women i mean when i know that christ is at the center when i know that this is what god wants wants me to do in my marriage then i would be able to wake up 
as early as 5 a.m as early as 6 a.m and carry on with my chores ensure that my children and my husband are well taken care of i won't even expect anything back from them and i will carry on with these duties with a heart full of joy because i know that as i'm rendering this service to them i am rendering it as unto the lord now i want us to take away something from this video if you don't take away anything i want you to take away this particular thing from this video whatever you are doing in marriage you are doing it as unto the lord and you need to stop looking at your husband as that useless man as that normal man as that is it not the random man is it not john is it not john is it not that useless man no you need to start seeing Christ in your husband. And I remember that there is something I once said. There is something I once said in one of my Bible studies. That the heart sees what you want it to see. If you want your heart to start seeing your husband as a person worthy of, of you respecting, worthy of authority, then it would be easy for you to, to flow. But if you configure your heart to see your husband as a useless man, to see your husband as a worthless man, as a man below you, as a man not worthy of your respect and your submission, then of course your heart will show you what you want to see. So we need to configure our hearts. And that is why for you to really do marriage well, for you to do marriage right as a Christian woman, as a godly woman, you need to make sure that your heart is in sync with the heart of God. You need to be a woman after God's own heart. And that is why we usually make reference to the biblical Proverbs 31 woman, the virtuous woman. She had a heart that God approves of. Now name it a heart of joy, a heart of service, a heart of sacrifice, a heart of proactiveness. A heart of like name it everything that a woman a godly woman a christian woman should have this woman had the heart and that is why she was able to see marriage as that godly institution and she didn't see marriage to be a burden she didn't see it to be a tax and she was able to thrive in her marriage yes because okay let's assume the main reason why women see marriage to be burdened is because they are not usually successful in their individual careers they are not usually thriving you know they are just merely at 16. in the morning they wake up they prepare the meals they bait their children they clean the house they feed their family their husband you know they give you know just the same cycle but here we see and it is evident that this proverb states one woman she thrived in her career in her business in the society like everyone knew about her and guess what in the positive way as a woman worthy of emulation as a wife that other wives should look at and take examples from now I want to put this out to you, I want to remind you and I want to remove that delusion from you that marriage is a burden, no. Marriage can be what you make out of it. Marriage can be what you want it to be. If you want marriage to be a burden for you, to be a burden to you, then of course it will. But if you want marriage to be a blessing, if you want marriage to be a having of peace for you then as much as possible it would be that for you but you need to understand that as a woman you have the power to make any of this however it does matter the kind of man you got married to and that is why as singles as much as possible we are advised to look before you leave to slow down you know ask god to lead you to the right person because your purpose and your destiny is usually intertwined with your marriage. If you've been called to do marriage, of course you have a destiny, you have a purpose. That is not, marriage is not an identity. Marriage does not define you. Marriage is not who you are. Motherhood does not define you. These are assignments that have been handed over to you. 
and we need to learn how to you know to separate ourselves to separate our true identity to find out our true purpose and destiny to find it out away from marriage you don't just get married and you know balance and you know get so comfortable that you forget that you are a woman of purpose you are a woman on a journey and getting married just means that you have taken upon yourself more assignments yes more assignments now there is nowhere in the Bible there is nowhere that God promised immediate reward for marriage no there is nowhere that God has promised that any woman that gets married oh there is this immediate reward oh your husband has to be rewarding you oh your husband no whatever the reward is if there would be should be with the institutor of marriage yes because he's the one that's giving you the assignment your husband did not give you the assignment in fact your husband is on another assignment on his own because he also has his own parts now but whether or not he's playing his part is none of your business and should not determine how well you play your own because everyone has to give account of how well they carried out this assignment so you are going to give your own account of how well you carried your assignments of marriage and motherhood. The same way your husband is going to give his own account of how he carried well his assignments of marriage and fatherhood. And that is why you shouldn't be distracted by your husband's actions. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be discouraged by your husband's action and attitude towards you. No, you shouldn't because everyone has his or her part to play and you must give account of this. So we need to learn that as women, as married women, we have our identity different from marriage and motherhood. And marriage and motherhood does not make you. I mean, you just got married like when? Maybe you were 25, maybe you were 20, maybe you were 30. That means that you've lived like 30 years of your life outside of being married and being a mother. It should prove to you that you've been called to do something outside of just being a wife and a mother. The moment you come to realize that you have a purpose, that you have an identity, that you have a destiny outside of being a wife and a mother, and that you have everything you need in you to be able to thrive in life then you will start to see marriage as being less of a burden and you will see marriage in the way god wants you to see marriage you will see motherhood the way god wants you to see motherhood this is a new year and if you've been doing marriage wrongly if you've been stressed by the so much burden of motherhood I want to ask you and I want to kindly tell you and call you make this invitation for you to invite God in the equation he gave you the assignment and it didn't mean for that assignment to weigh you down it didn't mean for that assignment to lead you astray or to make you feel less now we need to stop listening to some agents of darkness yes first of all we need to know that the institution of marriage and motherhood has so many enemies and the chief enemy is the devil because the devil doesn't want anything called marriage to be successful of course he knows what would become of him if marriages become more successful because marriage is the bedrock of parenting and if you have a successful marriage, of course, it is only right that you would produce godly seeds, godly and whole children who would also go on to continue to, you know, get married in God's way and the cycle continues. So we need to know that the institution of marriage and motherhood is in a battle, in a constant battle. And there are so many disciples of this enemy, there are so many agents of this enemy everywhere you see them especially on the social media propagating oh marriage is this oh why should you do this you're a woman why should you do that you shouldn't do that christ was humble he was willing he was obedient he was sacrificing up until death death for people that do not even deserve it yes 
He died for the sinners that do not even know about him, so that they may come to know about him. So if I am to live out the life of the institute of marriage, then I need to be also humble, I need to be also obedient, and I need to be also sacrificing, you know, the way Christ did. Even though this man does not deserve it, even though this man does not even pay attention to my actions, even though this man feels like it is his right, I'm not doing it because of him, I'm doing it as unto the Lord. If we really want to get the best out of marriage and out of our lives, which I am a great propaganda of, that every woman, married or single, has a purpose and you can live a fulfilled and a satisfied life. Being married, being a mother, shouldn't stop you. I am like a strong activist of this doing marriage right and being happy, being cheerful, being satisfied. If you really want to get it right as a woman, if you don't want to be a bitter, unhappy married woman, then you need to change your priorities. First things first, you need to understand that marriage is a godly institution and you need to know who and what you've been listening to. Who and what you've been listening to? Who is your mentor? Who do you look up to in marriage? There are so many people who blatantly describe themselves as being bitter feminists. And you are always hailing those people. You are always listening to them, you know, taking in everything that they say, hook, line and sinker. And you say you want to be happy in your marriage. You can't because the heart sees what you wanted to see. And your heart at that point is seeing bitterness, your heart is seeing body, your heart is seeing cage, your heart is seeing imprisonment, and that is what you would get out of it. So you need to change your cycle. And that is what I am dedicated to this year. I am dedicated to bringing more women out of rebellion because this is a place that God has liberated me from. This is a prison that God has brought me out from. I'm dedicated to, you know, leading more women into living a purposeful life, into living a fulfilled and a happy life. Why being wives and mothers? Yes, because these are assignments. And to show you that you can be all of these things and you can still be happy, you can still try. Change your thoughts, change your actions, change your priorities, you know. And you will see everything fall in place. You needed to put this out here. That being a mother, being a wife, choosing to be family oriented, choosing to have your values as a mother and as a wife does not make you weak, does not make you stupid. Choosing to be a sacrificial human being does not make you weak. I mean, these are the core tenets of Christianity. And for you to be a true Christian, then these traits should not be lacking in you. So in subsequent videos would come to you know it would come to light more and more as to how we can live fulfilled and purposeful lives, you know, while being mothers and wives, how we can thrive and live, you know, live to our fullest potentials while being Christian moms and Christian wives, you know, because we need more <laughs> disciples of godly marriage, we need more disciples of godly motherhood we need more people to come out and set people right because even the bible supports that the older women should teach the younger wives on how to love their husband and how to respect their husband how to be good wives and good moms now old year does not really mean age it's not age specific or age bound you know so we need more disciples we need more women to come out and speak out that enough is enough we are taking it back. Enough of the rebellion against what God wants marriage to be. Enough, enough, enough. So yeah, this is basically what has been in my heart for a very long time now. And I'm glad I finally get to pour this out to you. And just hopeful that in coming months, that there will be a change. There will be a radical change that I and so many other women will be able to rise up open up speak up and promote godly marriage and lead more women 
into thriving thank you for watching please subscribe to my youtube channel if you've not done so, so that you don't miss out on what is to come and i'll see you in my next video bye for now